from uh, partly from uh, the Wollongong Personal Construct Group. Um, Nadia is a member of that, and um, she's writing about um, not just her experience, but that of the group itself, I think. She says, it's with great personal sadness that I'm writing these few words in memory of Millamere. After his first visit to Australia, he became a personal friend as well as a PCP colleague. And in both contexts, his knowledge, insights, and generosity of intellect and spirit will always be remembered and valued. As a PP PCP visitor to an Australasian Congress held in Wollongong in 1988, Miller made an immediate impact on many people in our Australian group, many of whom were meeting him for the first time. His warm sense of humour, genuine interest in the people he met, and his ability to blend into people's consciousness as though he'd always been there, left an outstanding impression. We were fortunate that he stayed with us for a month, as did Bob, in fact, um, prior to the conference, and that is when he wrote the first of his narrative papers for the Journal of Constructivist Psychology. A consequence of this was an invitation sent to him the following year to come back to Australia and give an in-depth introductory workshop on personal construct theory, psychology and therapy. He accepted and gave us a memorable fortnight. Each day brought new insights, experiences and a multi-layered appreciation of the immense usefulness of the personal construct approach to living and working. Everyone who attended that workshop was unanimous in their um, appreciation of the rare opportunity we had been given to interact with clearly one of the finest psychologists as well as the most, one of the most interesting people we were ever to meet. The impact of his contribution to the Australasian Personal Construct Group along with the generous contributions of other prominent PCP personalities, was to continue for many years as the group thrived. In one of our aspects of PCP were taught in our university courses, and many private practitioners were using this approach in their work with clients, finding, as I did, that personal construct therapies worked when nothing else seemed to bring about the changes that were needed. Many students have also chosen a personal construct approach to their honours and postgraduate research work. And many of us in the Wollongong group have continued to supervise those projects, drawing on Miller's work as a source of inspiration and ideas. Just recently, we drew on Miller's community of self as a foundation for extending the use of the self-characterisation to incorporate Miller's approach to the concept of many selves a description of which has been included in a book chapter um, on PCP methodologies to be published later this year. That he is not here to see it is yet another reason for sadness. Miller once said that the discovery of personal construct psychology brought him to life as a psychologist. It can also be said that he brought, he brought personal construct psychology to life for many others with his unique personal approach to the understanding and use of many aspects of George Kelly's theory. Miller, we will miss knowing that you are in the world, though the continuing sense of your presence still reminds me of how comfortably you are able to visit our consciousness. David Savage. I guess I knew Miller in somewhat the same way as each of the people who've already spoken. And I also knew him differently. I get the sense he wouldn't have argued with that. I was lucky enough to better go to the funeral. Um, and I wrote to a couple of friends afterwards. So this is kind of a personal response about 48 hours after I'd heard he, was, he passed away. The service was a humanistic one, I just bear that in mind. Um, Peter Cummings, Dave Green, Alan Thompson and I made the journey to Dumfries to say goodbye to Miller with those others in his life that also wanted to say goodbye. 
It was a little cemetery outside Dumfries. It was a sunny day. You've seen the rolling hills, although not all of those were in this cottage borders. They are soft and gentle, they're green, they're wet a lot of the year. But when they're in sunshine, they're beautiful. Um, we were lucky that we could say goodbye to Miller on one of those days. It was sunny, it was calm. And in a sense, that seemed really appropriate. The calm that Miller exuded when you were in his presence and could somehow run through yourself was there at the grey side. It was a beautiful few hours. The various communities were there. A community of selves, existing communities, and shuffle around, I believe to join with the context in which they've been experienced. So my curiosity was to look and appreciate the other people who cared for Miller and see who they were and imagine the self that Miller was presenting most to them. The joy and it sometimes feels uncomfortable to say the joy when you're at the funeral. But the joy was to see that the person we knew and we've heard about was much aligned to the way others were speaking about him. And I thought that was wonderful. There was no sense of or not artificial self that or part of Miller that came to our community and his community, but the authentic Miller Mayor was presented to us openly and honestly. And it was a joy to see that the person we knew was the person very much that others knew. He brought those qualities that you've heard of. Uh, and it, it, for those who've already spoken, you'll, you'll find how accurate, I echo a few of your words. This is a bit like Miller last year. He, disregarded the technology and spoke, I'm not sure it was handwritten like this, but he went back and he was comfortable just speaking as Miller did it. He did it his way. And uh, now I'm going to see where I do it my way. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Yes, the Miller I knew and I thought was reflected in the Miller that others were talking about and now was gentle but strong. He was connected and comfortable in himself. He shared, he gave, he was open and he received. He seemed comfortable with aloneness, but he was a sociable person. He was thoughtful and creative. And I think the creativity was a real mark. Why would you listen to others? Why would you look out to the world why would you explore your community selves if you weren't going to be creative with that knowledge? And he exerted, I thought, creativity. An interesting point. I don't write that well. I have to work very hard at it. I think pretty good. But I have to work hard at writing. And at one point, it, it, we're talking about the excellence that Miller strived for. And it was mentioned how he didn't put his ideas out into public until he was well sure that he was going to say that which he most truly wanted to say. So I've now upped my corrections to around about 10 girls at a single paper. I may not be able to write as well as him, because he only took 10 girls. But he, he a second thing was said that he didn't want to present his ideas to others until he felt he was sure what his ideas were. Because if he gave them too early, then how could he know what was his and what he carried forward from the commentary? So that diligence and that caringness and that honesty were wrapped up in his writings and the process of how he went about it. I just say what I put on my card because it was partly on behalf of the community of uh, personal construct psychology and psychologists and coaches and teachers. 
Um, this is what I wrote, and, and bearing in mind it's, I had a privilege to write, and what the family would read from at least one person in PCP. Uh, I came to the funeral because I could. I came because I wanted to. I came to honor the man who was Miller Mayor and to represent the many people who would have wished to come but couldn't. Miller was a man who through the life he lived enhanced the life that we lived. We were touched by his life. I wrote that with the awareness that I, I, could, I was speaking as far as I was able on behalf of the community. Uh, thank you. It is a great honor to be part of a community of people who care about one another in the way that uh, 